Welcome to another episode of Coaching Football with Brian Clee. Here in episode 12, we're going to look at some ways to play multiple fronts using 3-4 personnel. This was by far the toughest episode to prep for and put together the presentation materials. As I was doing it, I was re-examining my defensive philosophy and while everything we do schematically is sound yet simple, I realized the way I go about communicating it to the other coaches on the staff and then especially the players was maybe not the clearest or simplest ways to do it, which led to a lot of revisions. And I think that's the big part of coaching and, and growing as a coach is reanalyzing your co coaching philosophy, your offensive and defensive philosophies, and, and making sure your scheme fits that so you're most efficient in your coaching. The video also ends up being closer to about 50 minutes instead of the 30 minutes I normally do, but I, th I think that's worth worth the time because it, I wanted to make sure I showed uh, alignments of our fronts against multiple formations, and then more importantly show the purpose of multiple fronts, which I think is to have complements and answers between each of the fronts. By the end of the video, I end up showing some run fits and how one front and, and the way we play it ends up having some weaknesses and how another front we use complements those weaknesses by, by having strengths to, to overcompensate from those. So as always, sit back, enjoy, hope you get something out of this. If you got a criticism, a question or something like that, please contact me on Twitter or leave a comment down below. Instead of reviewing our defensive philosophy, I think it's important for less experienced coaches out there who have aspirations to become a defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator or first-time coordinators to cover how, I guess, I've gone about developing a defensive philosophy. I firmly believe a well-thought-out defensive or offensive philosophy is going to make us as coaches more efficient in helping our student athletes achieve success by constantly referring back to that philosophy you've developed and that you're following, you keep your scheme and your install simple yet sound. I like to compare this to a toolbox. In essence, the toolbox only needs tools in it to fix problems that you're going to face. And then, more importantly, choosing the tools you keep in the toolbox should be able to solve multiple problems. Otherwise, you're not really sticking with that idea of keeping things simple. And the best example I guess I have of that is by and large, we are an odd front team with a nose playing a zero technique, whether or not he's two gapping or slanting, because we feel that tool is most effective against the problem with gap schemes. And if you've seen previous episodes defending the T in particular, we also found that it can be just as effective against uh, zone schemes and, and other styles of offense. Also, within my defensive philosophy, I believe quality is way more important than quantity. There simply is a limit to how many coverages, fronts, and pressures that can be mastered. Going back to that toolbox analogy, if the toolbox gets too full, it becomes clunky, it's hard to carry around, and then worse yet, if your players are not good at utilizing some of the tools in that box. It's, it's a complete waste of their time and your time, and you're going to come across as the coach that's mad at their players for not mastering things that you didn't give them enough practice time to master. Also, I think a, maybe a more important side effect uh, of having the right size toolbox of Simply Yet Sound Scheme is that it lets you keep your practices very efficient. After the first two weeks of preseason install, we keep our practices right around two hours, if not maybe a little less. I think that keeps the game fun and something positive that your guys are looking forward to. And that's much easier to do when you are only carrying the right tools in your toolbox. Our defensive philosophy, therefore, if uh, something in our scheme doesn't let our 11 guys attack downhill, pursue the ball carry, and, and lead to swarming gang tackles. I'm not going to include it. The nightmare, I think, of most defensive coordinators is, is ending up with that one-on-one -on -one tackle in open space where it comes down to which athlete is faster, stronger, more agile when the tackle happens. As much as you coach the tackling technique, 
I think if you end up in those situations on a very regular basis, they favor the offense because the offense is going to get the ball to either the back or thrown out to the receiver that is one of their top athletes. And over the course of the game, that one-on-one -on -one situation is going to favor the other team's best or second best athlete against the guy trying to tackle him. Part of our philosophy is, therefore, we play field and boundary side. That keeps with the simple yet sound. It's pretty simple to quickly get to the right place on the field. At field side, there's more space. I go line up over there, boundary side. Less space, I go line up over there, and then I listen to the call from there. So I, the only thing that would be simpler would be playing left side and right side. And while that can potentially still be sound, I think it, again, would favor the offense a little bit because, by and large, an offense attacks where there's more space in most situations and by being field boundary we can make an effort to try and get our most athletic defenders in that space. As far as alignments for us, our free safety, our stud linebacker, our MAC linebacker, and our defensive end all align to the field. The boundary side will have our deep or down safety and he'll adjust based on the formation and the number of backs. We'll talk about that coming up shortly. Our Bob linebacker, our Will linebacker, and our tackle. Our corners, we have played them field boundary. We have also just played them left and right. We've also taken our best corner when we have a lot of man uh, concepts in our game plan. We'll take our best corner and just put him on the best receiver of an opponent. Why we use multiple fronts is to keep better leverage against both the formations we're going to see, and the blocking schemes. I think multiple fronts gives us, as the defense, the ability to dictate to the offense. It lets us put defenders in the best position to win simply by changing alignments, by closing the strong side B gap or the strong side A gap or, or closing both B gaps. And then lastly, multiple fronts forces the offense to spend valuable practice time recognizing, communicating, and then most importantly, executing some adjustments to their base run blocking schemes and pass protections. We believe that by learning at least two and no more than four techniques, we can play multiple alignments that's going to maximize our strengths and attack the weaknesses of an opponent. Our inside linebackers have to master two techniques. Um, not two techniques as far as like being up on the line, but they're they got to get good at being in their home position somewhere between a 10 and 40 technique where they're in that, that guard tackle alignment area or a hip technique as a 50 or 60 where they're going to be able to fold into a B gap or get, especially on the boundary side, out and, and help with the pass coverage some. Our defensive line needs to learn a head up, an outside shade, and a slant and angle technique. Our outside linebackers have the most to learn. They learn the same three uh, techniques that the defensive line does, a head up, outside shade, and a slant and angle inside of a tight end. Um, but they also will have a fourth technique of, of learning how to play in an apex posi position to help out with the pass coverage and, and to be a hard force defender against uh, some formations and some of the calls we have. This definitely requires the most coaching, but I think it's more sound because uh, it's gonna we're going to take our most versatile athletes or our guys have ability to quick, more quickly develop their football IQ and, and put those guys in that position. And that can kind of overcome the fact that they're not the simplest position to, to coach in our defense against all formations and all our fronts. All of our fronts are dictated by the coverage that we call behind it. On the strong side of the formation, we'll always have an outside linebacker providing the perimeter force. The coverage, though, is going to dictate who is playing force on the weak side of the formation. Additionally, I think multiple fronts must complement each other. There's not really a point in having multiple fronts unless they're answering different problems. Nose 33 is really going to address and take away inside runs for the most part. However, it's going to struggle to keep leverage against outside runs from some formations, particularly uh, tight end 
formations of, of various sorts if the perimeter force can't be at a defensive back. Nose 54 slant complements that nose 33 by keeping leverage against almost all runs. The downside is it requires extra communication, especially against some motions and shifts. 32 stud ends up giving us great leverage to the field, but the downside is that boundary players can be put in conflict by some formations and offensive concepts. Our install progression begins with nose 33 because it is our way to eliminate most inside runs and also it builds the mindset of the secondary to play aggressive man coverage. Typically as you go into the preseason install, uh, that two weeks of fall camp per se, we've come off playing seven on seven and, and, and match up zone coverages. So getting those defensive backs to have that mindset of I'm going to be the man up anybody that we see is really important in my opinion. Nose 54 slant is our next front that we install because it's going to keep the center covered with that zero technique nose which to us is important. It's also going to gain leverage to the numbers, the, the, the strength of a formation while playing our match up coverages in the back. 32 stud is installed last to be able to have a way to divorce the pass and run strength while also allowing us to communicate and align a little bit faster than what we would do possibly in nose 54 slant. By teaching all three of these fronts, our nose 33, our nose 54 slant, and 32, all of our defenders are now prepared to play any alignment that their position would be asked to play. And it gives us versatility week to week to maybe make some adjustments to these fronts or play a slightly different front. Nose 33 or nose 54 squeeze are the two calls we have that takes the defensive linemen in our front and uses them to close both B gaps. By aligning in a 303 or moving on the snap to a 303, we can effectively spill interior runs and force one on one matchups in pass rush situations. The downside with nose 33 is it can lack leverage against outside runs and struggle at times to contain a QB. So by game plan, we'll have a nose 53 check for pro formations where a defensive back is, is not available to play force if we're worried about outside runs or against empty sets when an outside linebacker needs to play coverage responsibilities against three detached receivers. Any coverage can be matched up with our nose 33 but we feel it's most effective when we use both outside linebackers as C-gap pass rushers. So we like to have man coverage behind it and, again, get that five to seven man pass rush that gets us some one-on-ones. Our alignment rules begin with our secondary automatically checking the coverage to man. But by game plan and against certain formations, we'll include checks to hard or stress coverage. If you haven't checked out how we play our coverages, Links to the, the coverages are in the description down below. Episodes 8 through 11 covered them quite extensively. Our force rules, we set the strong side force to the back, the numbers in the field in that order with a stud or bob call from our outside linebacker. On the weak side, away from that back or the numbers of the field, a linebacker or a defensive back will be playing the force there. Our strong side alignments include a six technique and a three technique up front and a 40 tech inside linebacker. Our weak side alignments are gonna mirror that on the, on the line, and our inside linebacker on that side is gonna play a 30 technique. We can do a couple things with our zero tech nose. We can either two gap him, typically if we're confident we're gonna see more of a gap scheme where he's gonna be double teamed towards the strength. We're gonna let him two gap. If we are worried about a, a really quick hitting dive or more of a zone scheme or, or we kind of have a really good feel of where they're going to attack with the formation, we'll stunt him into the strong side A gap with a directional rhino or lion call, which tells him go to the right as the nose or go to the left as the nose from the inside linebackers. Against one by one tight, we're going to be hard uh, coverage on both sides, which means the corner force is going to override that stud force. Both the stud and bob would be spill players here. Against two by two, a double 
wing formation. Again, we'd initially make a stud call to the field, but the, the corners checking us into hard coverage are going to set both of them as force. Stud and Bob are both spill players here. Mac linebacker is the 40, the Will linebacker is the 30. Now we've got numbers, so we'd initially make a Bob call, and this is the first example of us. If a team really wants to have an outside run here to that surface of a tight end and a flanker, that Bob as a six technique is a little bit easier for a tight end to reach than him playing as a nine technique or, or, or some sort of front where we put him off the line of scrimmage five by four. Um, but we're, again, we're in Bob because of the numbers. We've got outside linebacker force on this side. On the field side, we would have a corner force with our hard coverage. Two by one pro, we'd make a stud call here. Again, there's numbers, one, two, three to the left to the field side. Um, that free safety has to be able to support the run quite quickly, especially if that stud gets reached. And again, that's a downside with the formation, but we've taken away a team's ability to run inside for the most part with this alignment. Twins, we've got the numbers to the field here. So we'd make a stud call. We'd be in man coverage out here um, and we're in hard coverage to the boundary side, which means our corner is in force. The Bob's a spill player. Will's a 40. Mac is a 30. If we get a twins open set or what we call two by one spread, we're calling uh, Bob to the numbers. He is blitz peel on, on number three there. He's the force player, gonna, gonna set the edge as best he can over there. Um, and then to the wayside. Now, we would tell the stud linebacker to play force but really that that free is available so if that stud linebacker decides to spill things the free can play outside of it um, especially if he's spilling number two is the free safety's uh, pass responsibility because we're a man on both sides we get uh, two by two with with double tights or, or double flexed uh, tight ends here we're calling stud to the strength and this is a case where we probably, in, in most cases, we're in this front because we want to get hands on that tight end with both our outside linebackers. So most likely we're going to put our Mac linebacker man-to-man -man on the running back there and let both the stud and the bob play aggressively on those tight ends and count on robber look force out of both our free and our deep safeties if we're staying in this front. We're going to call it a different front if, if we want to play force differently and that's that whole idea of fronts complementing each other. Two by two with a pro side and a spread twin side. The numbers are to the bob so we're making that call. We're in our man coverage. Um, Bob's playing the force again a little bit easier to get a reach block against and we're going to check out of this and, and get into a different called front if, if that's something that's a big concern to us. Two by two spread. We'd make a stud call because the back's over here. We've got numbers to the field and we're in man coverage on both sides. Three by one spread. So now the back is going to overrule the strength call at least of our force player we would be in bob here and depending on what we were worried about we're gonna use the nose we right now would be in a rhino call with him that's what this is gonna do is allow us to put that will linebacker on quarterback if they run speed option to the weak side and the the bob linebacker would have the running back on pitch and then if they go some sort of zone read we're forcing that running back to go to the strong side a gap where the mac would be on blocked so we end up with a really favorable uh quick fit for that mac linebacker by setting the force to with the bob to that back even though they've outnumbered us to the single side we've accounted for all three of those guys with defensive backs so we maybe don't have real strong force over here because it's essentially that stud linebacker is the first guy without a, a big time run pass conflict over there. Um, but we, we really like it set up this way. Three by one, and, and now they bring a tight end in. We're still going to call Bob because the back is set weak. 
uh, for the exact same reasons. But now we could change what we do with our nose and, and have him rhino to that tight end side, which ends up um, forcing the cutback of that, that running back, frees up that Mac linebacker to help out to uh, the running back hitting the A-gap here. Mac linebacker can be on the right side. Will linebacker can fit on the left side. Pro H up. Um, we're going to call Sky. Um, again, covered this in episodes 8 through 11. Descriptions are down below. Both the down safety and the free safety are, are going to play over to the number side. Deep safety has force there. And then we're stud because the back's offset to the field. And then last front or last formation that we'll line to, um, if they go empty, we feel we need an outside linebacker in the pass coverage. So we would be in Bob Force over here. We'd be in stress coverage. And in most cases against empty, if, if teams are putting the formation into the boundary like that, we're going to tell our defensive backs by game plan, hey, man up. The, the two receiver side, and, and let's send an inside linebacker and get five one-on-one -on -one pass rush opportunities um, after checking that front to nose 53 where the tackle or the end, depending on boundary or field, is going to widen from a three technique to a five technique on the offensive tackle so that way we can contain a quarterback scramble to the boundary potentially. Nose 54 slant or 13 is our first complement to our nose 33 front. Both of those are going to close the strong side A gap with the defensive lineman and the weak side B gap. It's what most coaches refer to as a under front. It can align to multiple formations and defend both the run or pass. Depending on the formation, the 54 slant front can have a box with anywhere from six to nine run first defenders. We can match any coverage with 54 slant, allowing the defense to stay on top of the pass route with matchup zone coverage, or we can obviously play man coverage with aggressive pressure if that's something we feel we want to do. The secondary is going to check the coverage to the front. Again, if you haven't checked out uh, episodes 8 through 11, I've covered those coverages that we're going to use quite extensively. Our force is going to be set first to the numbers and to the field with the stutter bob call. Our weak side force is going to be either uh, inside linebacker or defensive back, depending on the coverage called there. That's an example of the coverage dictating the front. Our strong side alignments are going to be a wide nine technique from the stutter bob linebacker, a five technique, and I consider the zero technique to be a strong side alignment because he's either moving into that strong side A gap or, like I said, with the 13 front, he could align their uh, pre-snap as a one technique. Our weak side alignments are a six and a four technique. All the even techniques in the front are going to get a directional call additionally to slant to the next offensive alignment of strength. You'll see that in a moment here. Our inside linebackers are both going to be 30 techniques unless one of them needs to widen because they need to play force because of the coverage. Then they'll play uh, anywhere from a 40 to 60 technique depending on down and distance and some other game plan tendencies. And they need to be ready to make a tank call to close that A gap if needed. Again, that's an example of the coverage is, is dictating the front. First up, one by one, full house T set. We initially make a stud call because of the field side, the numbers are even. When the secondary checks the coverage to hard, that still is the stud linebacker. He can become a spill player. He doesn't have to play force anymore. Both the corners are playing force on both sides. Two by two, double tight, double wing. It's going to be the exact same thing. Stud call gets canceled by the corner who is playing force once we're in hard coverage. We're slanting the zero, the four, and the six to the strong side. And then our mech and will linebacker are 30 techniques. Two by one tight. Um, Bob call because there's one, two, three to the boundary. He's going to be force in our deep safety on that side in man. Once that tight end blocks, he can pull his trigger and, and he's going to make that Bob linebacker right. Um, if the Bob linebacker uh, happens to be a spill player. In general, we're still going to teach him to spill some sort of kick out just because I, I'd rather the ball runs east to west than, than crease us north to south. And I keep on considering teaching that guy a, a dent technique 
when he's playing force and always taking things on with his inside shoulder and keeping that outside arm free. But as of the past couple of years, we've we've had that guy spill in that situation. If, if we want him to be a force guy, we're going to get into our 32 front, and, th and that's an example of the fronts complementing each other. 2 by one pro stud because the numbers are to the field here. And now our safety on the boundary side can walk down, play as a down safety, and, and play force on that side. Both, both sides are checked to man coverage because there's one detached. Two by one twins. We'd make a bob call because there's three to the boundary. Bob is the force on that side. We're in our read coverage. On the field side, we're in our hard coverage with corner force. We're slanting the zero, the four, and the six to the strength with the left call. Two by one spread. Numbers are to the boundary. We'd make a bob call. We're in our read coverage there. Lines slanting to the right, and now the free in man is man's number two. He can walk down and play force from a five by four position against a two tight a Y and a H set here. Three to the field, so we're making a stud call. And on the back side, we're asking that deep safety. Even though he's in man coverage, he is the force. Essentially, the concept to me is if that number two starts to block our Bob linebacker in any way, shape, or form, that number two is no longer running a route. He can become the force late, especially to the boundary side. Two by two with the flex tight end, um, an H back there. Um, the two by two with the flex tight end. The running back is to the boundary, so we would make a bob call. We're in our read coverage over there. We're man to the field, and we are saying that that free safety, because this guy's detached, he can play force here. If that number two blocks our stud linebacker, the free safety can pull his trigger, and, and that's when he's needed in the run. If number two releases and, and runs some sort of pass, the free can match that, and the stud and the Mac linebacker can end up making things correct on, on some sort of run to the field here. And at the end of this, I'll show how we can complement the issue of there's definitely some space to the field here. And we can complement that with our 32 front. Two by two, running backs to the field would be in a stud call on the boundary side. Now the deep safety has a, a detached receiver, so our will would be the force on that side. He's going to make a tank call to close the a gap so that way he can both play a ball that spills and fold in to something in the b gap and also be in position especially on the boundary side he's still in position to help in pass coverage and, and reroute a seam making sure that he helps his deep safety so three by one to this field um, we're going to be in stud cloud coverage in most situations and what that does is we puts us in a spot where we are a little bit weak to the boundary if they run something like speed option where the will linebacker is on that number two we're in our peel coverage over there and that mac linebacker has to be ready to fold he's a, still a run first defender he has to be ready to fold all the way at potentially that opposite a gap so definitely stressed a little bit on that weak side uh fit being in, in our cloud coverage. If they put formation in the boundary in a three by one set, now to take away that stress to the single side, if that running back is to the field, we're in stress on the boundary side. Bob is our force player there. And now the free is free to be an LA force guy or on a, a crack repeat. Uh, replaced situation the corner can become the force guy depending on the blocking scheme and that frees our, our Mac linebacker up to be a quarterback player against something like speed option three by one pro numbers are to the field so we've got a stud call we also might sky the free safety if, if they show they're in this formation to run an outside zone or buck sweep or something like that to the three receiver side and they Again, we're a little bit weak to that boundary side. At the end, I'll go over how we can complement the issues on the single receiver side 
by aligning in 32 and playing stress to the field. Pro wing, stud call, and then again, we probably will sky most teams that we've seen that get in this formation. They're, they're planning on running something to that four-man surface. Last one is empty. We're in a stud call because it's to the field. We're in our stress coverage there. And then to the boundary, we are in our read coverage. Our will is the force there, so he's going to make a tank call, close the A gap, leave an open B gap, be able to pl play both force and fold into that B gap and be in position to help reroute a seam. 32 or 40 angle are the calls we have to close the strong side B gap and the weak side A gap. It's what most coaches call an over front or movement to an over front. Just like nose 54 slant, it can align to multiple formations. It can get us a uh, six to nine run first defenders in the box. We can play any of our matchup coverages with it. Or for the most part this past year, we've actually matched it with quite a bit of our man coverage and brought pressure. The alignment rules for it. When I say stud, that is going to set our stud outside linebacker to the field as the force player. Weak side then ends up being either forced by a defensive back or an inside linebacker against one back sets. The difference with stud 32 is our free safety will become an, an adjuster to two by one formations as our boundary safety will typically play down as again especially to two back formations. Strong side we're going to force the pass strength which we are saying is to the field with the stud outside linebacker and the front strength which is going to be set to the tight end back numbers or field in that order those strong side alignments are going to be a six technique and a three technique and then the weak side alignments are a five technique and a head up two technique our inside linebackers are typically going to be 30 techniques in there unless again they need to widen just like a nose 54 slant to a 40, 50, 60 T technique, and they have to be ready to make a tank call to close an open A gap. Uh, I would not use this front against the full house T. Um, if I did, I think you need to attack the C gap so we'd have an automatic crash call with our end and our bob, and then we would be sliding the linebackers inside because we are in hard coverage on both sides, which means the corner can play force. Two by two, double tight, double wing, same thing. Hard on both sides, corner force on both sides. Slide the linebackers to uh, 90, 50, and 10. Play a six, three to the strong side and a five and a two to the weak side. Two by one, tight into the field. We're stud here, hard, which means we're in corner force on the boundary. Pro into the boundary. We have our down safety as the force, and we're in man. Man to the field. Stud's obviously force. We could play our read coverage here. Um, most likely, if we're calling this front, we want that stud linebacker to be really, really heavy as a run fitter. So we would most likely check into man unless they run a ton of crossing routes out here with one and two. And we're in hard and have corner force on the boundary. Two by one spread. Our down safety is providing force to the boundary side. We're manned up. Pro with two tight ends, one on and one off. We are going to say our deep safety is forced to the boundary. Anytime we've got our outside linebackers on those tight ends, we want to, if at all possible, make a defensive back the force player. And, and we're saying it, most teams that get into this set, they're doing it to be of the run. As soon as that tight end blocks our Bob linebacker, that deep safety can pull his trigger, and especially since it's into the boundary, there's less space, he can go fit it. Two by two flex, and I will talk more right at the end of the video about the benefits of stud 32 here as opposed to nose 54 slant, but read to the boundary side, our will linebacker, we're now calling him the force, 
in R2 technique, he is responsible for A gap first. He's striking the guard, but keying that center. And, and his job is to fall into that A gap um, after if he gets some sort of reach block or something like that, he's going to probably get reached by the guard, which is fine, and then work back into that A gap. To the field, we are really, really strong. If number two tries to reach or something like that, we've got him bracketed with the stud, the Mac, and the free. Spread, we're read both sides, stud force and will force. Stud against three by one trips to the field. Definitely we want to be in cloud anytime that back's offset to the field in case they swing him or they have some sort of quarterback sweep out to this side. Three by one into the boundary. Now we're in stress on the boundary side. We are saying the will is the force defender and then the stud really is not need it to be the force defender. Um, I would have him make a tank call, leave that B gap open. Uh, they get quarterback sweep out here or a speed option. He can go fit the quarterback and then the free a corner, depending on how number one blocks. If he stalks, the free can be secondary force almost immediately. If he cracks, the corner can be that secondary force and we've got both the pitch and the keep threats on speed option matched up. 3 by one pro. I'll talk about this some again at the end of the video here in a few moments. Stress to the field that that stud can play and carry two, really squeeze him to the corner. And now if they do something to the boundary here, we've got everything bracketed with our will, our deep safety, and our corner. 3 by one pro wing. We would teach our stud to play man on two unless he crosses here and our freeze man on three um, unless we get like double outs or something like that he's still got to chase it but if, if they're both double outs this they're both run into the stud so don't want to overcomplicate the teaching and and get this guy to play this like our corners do necessarily so uh, again primarily man with the idea that teams that are in this set are trying to run the ball to the four-man wing surface that they've created. Our stud and our Mac can funnel both two and three to their free safety if they're both running vertical. And last one, three by two, spread to the field, some empty. We're in our stress coverage here, studs force on the boundary side. I, I, I for the most part, when we see teams get into empty, on that boundary side, we have no problem saying, hey, deep safety, corner, walk up, play man, let's bring some pressure, get five, a five-man rush, and, and get some one-on-ones here. Mac would need to be making a tank call, open the B gap, close the A gap, so that way he can both help make sure he walls three and can fit B gap on a quarterback run. In this video, I want to make sure I took time and explained how fronts can and should complement each other. For us, nose 54 slant is a call which is an odd front with movement, while stud 32 is our call to have a static even front. Nose 54 slant has five guys on the line of scrimmage, whereas stud 32 has four guys on the line of scrimmage. Nose 54 slant sets both our run and pass strength to the numbers in the formation, but stud 32 divorces the pass strength, which is set to the field, from the run strength, which we're going to set to the tight end and then the offset back and then the numbers and then the field. Some formations can stress nose 54 slant as the field side force players have to play in more space while stud 32 can be outnumbered to the boundary. The first example of how nose 54 slant and 32 stud uh, complement each other is a 3 by one pro or tray set, whatever you want to call the formation. By rule, our stud linebacker is going to play a 9 technique anytime he gets a tight end. So we've got five guys on the line of scrimmage, which means we have to rotate the secondary and play either sky or man coverage to the field side there. And Sky is really, we've got double force players 
it solves some of the problems that right now in man our deep safety yeah he can pull his trigger after the tight end blocks the stud or the stud spills a down block or something like that but that deep safety has a lot of space to run and, and go fit and whatnot while the the free in the corner and man so sky's a little better for force here but both of them have the issue on the boundary side of only having two for two where our will linebacker and our corner in in both situations are, are playing our, our cruel rules back there and we've got two for two even getting into studs 32 doesn't completely alleviate the problem unless we match up the coverage um, to play stress to the field where we've got uh, four over three with our corner free stud and, and Mac linebacker stud can now force it make sure there's a narrow alley Mac can Mac or will depending on the blocking scheme can be scraping to that alley and that free after he gets a run read out of the tight end he can fit in that alley too so we're just as strong, maybe even stronger to the field side here, especially keeping leverage uh, and, and making sure we force the ball back into the alley. And we've also taken care of the issues on the boundary side where we now have three guys with our will, our deep safety, and our corner over the two receiving threats or a blocking threat if something like speed option comes to the boundary. The other example is getting some sort of RPO out of a two by two set where there's either a flex tight end or a, a tight end a, a pro surface to the field but twins in the offset back to the boundary nose 54 slant we would be slanting to the boundary here because they've got three receivers we're good against any rpo you can draw up because that Bob Linebacker doesn't really have a gap in here. When that guard pulls, the B gap disappears. Our Will Linebacker is going to be uh, scraping to opposite A because he's got both guard and back away. So he's scraping to the opposite A. That Bob Linebacker can hang and, and doesn't really have to fit until the ball bounces back to him because the B gap has disappeared. We've got our nose blocked by the center and the, the tackle blocking our five tech tackle the weakness in this front is if the ball gets spilled our, our stud linebacker is a six technique we could have him punch the offset h here and, and play that reach block that's an, an adjustment we could make to the front really quickly instead of him uh, slanting to the strength um still though he could easily get reached as a six technique and that, that puts that free safety in a lot of conflict coming down and, and playing the force to the field there. Even here, again, we're good to the boundary with the, the RPO. That Bob linebacker can wall and play underneath the slant, which means the corner as the play progresses can, can drop off and, and play outside help. That Bob linebacker is going to do a better job of, of rerouting and playing the seam and, and making sure he keeps the job of the deep safety a little less stressful stressful but we still have the same issues with our free providing force here if that stud linebacker gets reached or if he's uh slanting inside so a lot of space over there and the worst part of all that is if that free if we're asking him to to run downhill like that and, and play force to the field he can be in big time stress if, if that H puts his foot in the ground and goes vertical. The the free has to be very disciplined and, and match what that H back is doing. Um, I don't know if a team would actually try this RPO all the way of, of power read and having a pop pass to the, the H back there, but they, they certainly could adjust the blocking scheme. And if that free safety has been making a bunch of plays, he might get lack the eye discipline and, and might end up giving a, a really easy throw and catch for a touchdown to the opponent. So stud 32 alleviates many of the issues to the field. Our stud outside linebacker is, is forced. He's playing overhang. He's making sure the ball cuts up in the alley. He's keeping the job of the free safety much easier. The free safety is in less conflict, doesn't need to be downhill as fast in the alley. So he's able to stay on top and inside of a pop pass or a seam to the offset H. 
the issue happens now on the boundary side. If we stay in our read coverage, it relies somewhat on that Will linebacker rerouting and helping carry a seam of two to our deep safety. So if our Will linebacker follows his normal reads of guard away, flow away, scrape to the opposite A, he's going to be gone in this window to the slant and the curl is going to be wide open. I, I think our deep safety will be able to still stay on top and inside of the vertical of two, but our corner with the seam read out of his key at no, of the number two going vertical, he works to play the outside deep corridor there and, and protect the post corner if, if number two runs that. So that slant's going to end up wide open. And we could ask our will to change his read, read the tackle maybe, and, and bounce and whatnot, but that's going to slow him down, and that's not something I want to do. So the next answer would be go man coverage. And, again, we're going to be really good to the field, and I think we're better to the boundary because we're going to be inside leverage. If, if they would go with that seam, the, the deep safety is going to be able to, to match and, and disrupt it and carry that seam, and the corners are going to be inside the, the slant and, and have leverage on that, so the quarterback's not going to have an easy open throw. But if he can make that throw to the boundary, which is, is not as far, he's going to be able to complete passes on, on that out. And I'm okay with giving that up to the flats, but we're still giving the offense something. And as a defensive coordinator, I'm, I'm trying to eliminate that. So the last thing I want to cover is if you play multiple fronts, you can take bits and pieces of those fronts and put those together if an opponent presents a, a problem that you have not seen yet. Uh, to be honest, we don't see uh, any real RPO that I'm aware of. So if we did and, and we had a week to game plan, we already run nose 54. We already squeeze out of this front and end up in a uh, 303 off of movement with our end and our tackle. This is what most coaches would call a tight front just off movement. The Mac and Will would not change their reads. They're still going to be able to play fast downhill, guard away, flow away. That Will is going to fit to the opposite A. It's closed by the nose. He can start scraping and, and playing underneath the block of the tackle and, and getting to the play side. Our Mac linebacker is going to be in better position to play the spill by the five technique that's squeezing. Our stud outside linebacker is going to be able to force and, and funnel a seam to the free safety. Our free safety can play a little slower because he's an LA fitter and fitting inside of the H, which means he's also going to keep leverage if the H puts his foot in the ground and, and tries to run that pop pass. Over on the boundary side, if we get uh, two out, uh, a, a alert call and, and read from our corner, the corner is going to be at the keep on top of that and outside leverage and, and cancel that. Our Bob linebacker is used to be used to playing uh, an overhang. He doesn't really have a gap until the C gap because that four technique is, is inside and in the B gap, which becomes the A gap, I guess, as the, the guard pulls away. So that Bob linebacker can hang there. He can help reroute a seam, keep the job of that deep safety protecting the open middle of the field and, and denying that post crossing his face, make that deep safety's job a little bit easier. If, if we do get a seam call, the, the corner can melt with that seam call and, and play the outside corridor uh, and protect against the uh, post corner route out of, out of number two as the Bob linebacker matches that slant underneath. And just being in that position a lot of times will prevent the quarterback from even making the throw on that slant. And then if the quarterback would happen to put his foot in the ground, see that everything is bottled up to the play side because we're squeezing and, and spilling and fitting, and he bounces back to the backside C gap. That run takes a while. The Bob linebacker could pull his trigger, and, and I'm pretty confident that we'd be able to make that tackle on, on a drastic cut by the quarterback with that Bob linebacker with good leverage. So hope all of this uh, helps you understand how playing multiple fronts is possible and, and how it gives you some extra answers if you need them because guys are used to playing a 
variety of techniques and, and you're able to put those techniques together as you need to to be able to really attack an offense and, and take away things that you're trying to do. As always, guys, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Check me out and follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Um, don't forget to su subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And if you have uh, anything that maybe requires a longer response, hit me up at CoachBrianKlee at gmail.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. See you again.